Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to do an amplifier and subwoofer install in this 2020 Chevy Silverado. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate this amp and sub to the existing audio sound system. Let's get started. Now, one quick thing to note here, our Silverado actually does have the factory Bose audio sound system. So if that be the case in your situation, this will apply to you. Now, if you don't have Bose, we'll still give you direction tips and techniques on how to install your amplifier to the factory audio sound system. So let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to need for our install. Here are the bench, the parts that we're going with today's install. First and foremost is the amp and sub that we're installing. Now, the subwoofers aren't here at the bench. We'll show you what those look like in a moment, but they are four 8-inch SDR SCAR Audio subwoofers. Um, they're a dual voice coil 2 ohm, and we've wired each sub in series, then two subs in parallel, because our hope is to get one ohm at the amplifier. Now, speaking of that amp, we're going with this big kicker amplifier. This is the CXA 1800.1, does 1800 watts at one ohm. Now, to support that amp and sub install, we need a bit of wiring and accessories here. Um, wiring kit, we're going with uh, this OFC kit by SCAR Audio. Uh, this is a four gauge amplifier wiring kit. Comes with power, ground, RCAs, remote turn on wire, fuse and fuse holder, everything that you'll need for your install. Now, the audio factory audio integration piece is we have this audio control epicenter um, that the customer wants us to put in. This helps us restore uh, the audio quality of the subwoofer uh, that's being fed to the amplifier. And we have an LC2i, which is going to pull that factory signal and convert it into something that our amplifier needs. We're going to go ahead and install this amplifier actually on the back wall of our Silverado um, on a custom amp board that we've ordered in and we can link that amp board in the description of the video. So let's head to the car to start disassembly and preparing our wiring um, so we can run that from the battery and factory audio sound system to our amplifier equipment. Back here at the Trek, let's go ahead and prepare removing the upper portion of the rear seat. We're going to be mounting our amplifier against the back wall and unfortunately it does not fold down. Let's remove our headrest. You squeeze it in the side, it comes on out pretty easily. And next, we need to remove the base portion of our headrest. Um, essentially here, using a flathead screwdriver, we're pushing in this little tab there on the front, which allows the housing to pop on out. Each headrest is gonna have two, and since we have three headrests, there's gonna be six in total to remove. Go ahead and pull those out all the way down. Lifting up the rear seat up underneath, you're gonna find four 10 millimeter bolts. Now these bolts are the lower anchor for the rear portion, the rear back seat portion. Removing those four bolts is gonna allow the bottom end to swing free. Last thing here, kind of pulling back, there's gonna be three clip anchor points that have a release mechanism that allows you to actually release the top portion, allowing it to lay down flat. We'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. And then finally, you're gonna have a T50 torque screw holding in the bottom of the center seat belt. Once that's removed, pull and fish that up and around. That's gonna be out of the way for you. Then you can remove the back seat totally. All right, so we got the back of the back seat removed. Uh, we're probably gonna leave these in. You can take them out, they're 18 uh, millimeters holding it in, but uh, I think this is gonna give us plenty of space. Here's the amplifier mount that we're using, and it'll go against this wall. Now, as, uh, as you saw us remove this rear seat cushion, uh, we started by removing the three headrests, and once those were removed, these guys sit in here, and they clip only with one clip. You got a screwdriver, and you got to push in this front piece. See how it goes inwards? Screwdriver, panel tool, pick tool, you just got to push it in with a little bit of pressure, and they pop right out. And to remove your headrest, you just squeeze the buttons on the side. All of them will have a release. Once those are out of the way, down below, we have... In our case, four 10 millimeters. We had one, two, three, four that we used a really long extension for. There's a little hook here on the top, as you can kind of see right there. And it's just right here at the top of the seat. We just got a screwdriver to release it. Start from one side and work your way over. 
once you do all those three, the seat can lay down. Now, what really is holding it in from coming totally out is your seat belt here. Um, and it's a, just a T50 bolt here. So we pull that out. That T50 Torx will basically be the last thing you have to remove before the seat can totally slide on out. And what that exposes is our factory Bose amp and other electrical components here. We need to retain those. And so this amp mount we ordered, we'll link this in the description if you wanna pick one up yourself, but essentially it'll go in this location and all the factory equipment will still hook to it. And then it gives us a little bit of space to install our own here as well. All right, so we went ahead and uh, got everything mounted. Now this board does require us to relocate the factory modules with the Bose amp on this side and module on this side. And basically you flip them upside down so the harnesses point the opposite direction. And what that opens up is a ton of space to mount your own equipment. So we went ahead and put our huge kicker amplifier there. And then we did our epicenter and our LC2i. Those are all in. And uh, basically at this point of time, we are ready to start wiring. Uh, we just wanted to get this all in just to see how it fit and uh, we can plan our wire out from there. All right, so we're back here at the bench. Now we have our amp rack back out of the car. Uh, we test fitted everything, it seemed to fit great. Uh, we relocated our modules to the left-hand side and we're gonna mount our amplifier there in the center and our uh, epicenter and LC2i. So at this point, it's just a little bit of wiring on the bench. Our amplifier needs power and ground and sub output. Epicenter is just a pass through. It also needs power and ground, which we'll probably snag from our uh, amplifier terminals. And we also have an LC2i, which also needs power and ground input and as well as output. So uh, let's go ahead and get everything assembled and then we'll show you where each connection is going to be made. All right, so we finished up wiring our amp rack here. Now we pulled our amp rack out of the truck so we can do a wire it here at the bench. It's just so much easier than trying to do it on the wall. Now we zip tied it, made it really nice and clean. Our ground is about right here. We're gonna make a ground right there um, in this location. We'll show you in a moment. Our two outputs go into our subwoofer box. Power wire will come off here and go towards uh, the passenger side and we're gonna run that all the way towards the battery. Power and ground. So ground goes all the way down. Power goes out here. Um, sub output goes this way. And we have a remote turn on wire which comes down and as goes into our LC2i which we'll cover here in a moment. Now there's two other runs here and we're actually snagging power and ground for our two additional pieces of equipment. On this side of the amplifier, these two power and grounds that we snag from the terminals of our amplifier are feeding our LC2i as well as our epicenter. So we got those power and grounds in. And then on our LC2i, this is kind of where this signal starts because this is going to tap into the Bose amp. So we need signal from the Bose amp and then we feed it through this input here. We use some nine conductor cable. We're going to feed it our input right into our LC2i. And uh, the other end will tap into the Bose subwoofer output of the amplifier. Um, again, this is nine conductor cable. We're not using all the wires in this. We're only using two pairs. Everything else we just... Uh, heat shrunk off and it's there and available in case we need it down the road and that's all zip tied on the top as well Now we didn't use the remote in but we are using the remote out We want this to generate our remote turn on for us And so we're not going to feed it a remote or accessory signal um, It'll sense that through the circuitry and turn everything on on our behalf So all we did is on the remote out this goes to the remote end of the amplifier. We also teed in and it's gonna turn on our epicenter as well. So those are the connections on this side. Now for RCA cables starting at our LC2i, um, the space output it actually goes up into the epicenter where we're gonna do some signal restoration. And then the output goes into our amplifier. And we've got everything zip tied nice and tight. We also have a base knob wire coming out our LC2i, which will run out front. That's it. Looks like a lot of wiring, but it's just a couple of connections here. So those are our connections. The manual connections we need to make in the car is we need to hook up our LC2i connections, the other end of our nine wire. We need to hook that up. We also need to run power and ground for our amplifier and run our base knob up to the front of the cab. So really at this point of time, let's go ahead and get this board installed.
All right, so we got the uh, amp rack all in, all bolted up, nice and uh, nice and clean. I really like it. Uh, got our sub wire out, ready to go. We'll run it to the box and cut its length. This is the input to our LC2i. So remember, we're not using purple or green, so we'll just insulate those off. Left and right input, we'll combine it if it's a mono output. This is the main harness out of our Bose amp that we're tapping into here. Now, if you don't have Bose, you can actually tap into your rear door speakers if you want. You can tap into those speaker wires and the B pillars. Um, you could pull the factory radio as well. There's also a T harness on the market available, which we'll link in the description, which basically you can modify uh, at the radio for non-amplified versions of this truck. And that may be a nice clean way too. So we'll link all that part uh, and information down in the description for you. For us here today for signal, we just need to go here. Now power wire comes down, fall on factory loom. We just fished it under this panel. We're up underneath here, as you can kind of see, underneath that channel, working our way forward towards the battery. Now we've continued to run our wire up underneath the kick panels. Everything's held in with clips. We actually had to pull and get all this before, which is why it's already pulled apart where the previous install shop, audio shop, went ahead and just butchered this harness, um, which we need to repair. But this is all off again, just clips. Everything's held in with clips and it pops out super easily. Uh, we continue running our wire underneath the factory channel here. Now, previous shop went ahead and uh, drilled a hole through there. We're gonna use that just so we don't have a leak um, in that location. But there's the factory loom is up, up above, and we'll show you exactly through that grommet, factory grommet, there's a way for you to pass that wire through without having to have to cut a hole like this past shop did. So we'll show you that right so now. So if we look back in here, you see the factory grommet. There is a little nipple to the right of that hanging off there right there that little nipple you can actually cut off which exposes the hole through the factory grommet you can easily feed your wire right through there uh, on the channel we've done this a ton of times where we use our notorious middle hanger to fish that wire through the grommet you lube it up with some soap and water and that allows you to pull that wire easily through just cut that nipple off with some flush cuts then there's a nice hole through that grommet where you can feed your wire through now for our ground, it was kind of hard to capture it, but what we've done here is we still need to vacuum it up, but we went ahead and chose this location because as you can see, it's where all the spot welds are. So it's one of the strongest areas of the cab of the truck besides the frame itself. What we did is we used a wire brush and went ahead and cleaned up that paint so it was nice and clean, free of any resistance there. And using a 10 millimeter, we went ahead and put a Nolten bolt there and uh, got that all in. Now we need to obviously clean up our shavings there, but uh, there is our ground point of our ant wrap. Next here, we need to go ahead and tap into our subwoofer output, our factory bow sub for signal for a line out converter so we can send signal to our system here. And on this plug, which is the, I guess, squarest eight pin harness, there's gonna be a blue and a green wire. Blue's your positive, green's your negative. And what we're gonna do is combine our two positives and our two negatives here and solder right into those connections. Essentially here, that'll just rub that signal needed to turn on our LC2i and put out signal to our amplifier. Now let's go ahead and make those wire connections. We don't want to break the original connection. So using those wire strippers, we strip back the shielding and poke the hole through it. Then we're gonna thread our wire through it, kind of like threading a needle and we'll wrap our wire around the Bose factory wiring. We're gonna do that left and the right and solder that connection so it's nice and solid, again, without breaking the original connection. We'll solder both sides, both positive and negative, and wrap those connections in some electrical tape. Now, once those are fully insulated, both the left and the right, we're gonna re-loom our harness with some high temperature Tessa tape, just like factory, so it's nice and insulated from the elements. All right, so we got that all loomed back up. Positive was our blue, negative is our green. So you can go ahead now and plug this back into the Bose amp. Make sure it's all locked up. So we went ahead and fed the power wire up. It goes right behind that 
the heat mat there. That's where the previous shot cut that hole. Um, and then it came up here. We wrapped our wire around, split loomed it. We made a little ABS fuse holder mount there. Uses that bolt. Zip tied this end here. So we got everything in there. Got our heat shrink on there. We put wire ferrules in the fuse holder. Came around here to the positive post on the battery. Previous shop went to the tightening stud. Just go right here. That's a lot better. And based on your fuse holder and wire size, you may be able to even utilize the factory channels here uh, to run your wire here. Uh, with our configuration, we just went that way. And uh, essentially we are done under the hood. We can go ahead and now put the negative back on the battery as uh, all our connections are now made. All right, so we got everything back in. Rack is all in, everything's wired. Everything zip tied nice and clean there. That is it, wow, this turned out awesome. Got our four eights, those are all done. Everything's wired to one ohm. So we're getting the uh, best wattage out of our kicker amp. If you have any questions on what we did here, just go ahead and post a comment below. This install is a little bit more over the top than generally what we show you how to do at home, but we'll still link the parts that we use in the description, any T harnesses, any great direction that we suggest. We'll put it down in the description in case you wanna replicate something similar on your own. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.